Good morning, everybody. It's a pretty cool morning, but I think it's actually supposed to get pretty warm today. Uh, I think like 24 degrees. And I'm pretty sure the plan is to cut hay. Looks like Eric's got everything packed up and ready to go. In the last episode, we were preserving grass for the winter by fermenting it, also known as making silage. Now, the other method that I mentioned in that video was drying the grass. This is known as making hay. And of course, the first step in drying grass is to cut the grass. So when we pulled in with the abbey, just sank in the mud. This field is still too wet. So we're gonna be cutting the whole thing with walk-behinds. It's going to take quite a bit longer, but um, yeah, it's better than getting mud in your hay. Eric is finishing up the very last little bit of this field, so we are done. Up above is actually part of this field as well, but it's kind of a different land classification, so we won't be cutting that until August. I'll explain that in a future video. There's several other fields that we're gonna be cutting today as well, so we're gonna to move to the next one. In the US and especially central US, a lot of hay is cut on wide open fields. Almost all of the work can be done from inside of a tractor. You can cut the hay with a tractor, you can head the hay with a tractor, you can rake the hay with a tractor, bale it with a tractor, and then with these big hay bales, you also pick them up with a tractor. Oftentimes you don't even need to get out of your tractor. But for the majority of Switzerland, it's not like that at all. This one's next. I think it's dry enough that we can run the Abbey on it, so I think it's gonna go a lot faster. So I just went around the edge with the Euro here, um, just cut all of the hard to get to places, and then Afterwards, the machine will come through and just cut everything that's wide open. So it's a little bit more difficult to get to the, um, like up against the posts and stuff with the big machine. So this is a little bit easier with the walk behind. But the next field is this one here. We got to cut this whole flat area and then uh, this whole bank as well. Like I've talked about in previous episodes, Swiss fields are relatively small and there's not a lot of flat ground. The flat ground that there is is often reserved for making hay and silage, but that's not enough. To get enough hay for the animals to be fed through the winter, we've also got to make hay on the steeper terrain. A lot of big farming equipment just doesn't work on steeper terrains. It's really designed for flatter fields. So a lot of the work is still done on foot. This is one of those things that makes farming in Switzerland so difficult and time consuming. When working on a steep hill, it can take hours to do the same job that a tractor could do in minutes on flat ground. Now that being said, the technology that's developed around this alpine farming is pretty impressive. So there are other companies that make similar machines, but all three of these machines are made by a company called Rabbit. Uh, this one is the oldest of the three. I think it came out in 1992. They all have a hydrostatic transmission, so if you twist left, you go backwards, and then right to go forwards. The further you twist, the faster it goes. The type of mower in English is called a sickle bar. This works very similarly to like a pair of hair clippers where the grass goes in between these teeth and the teeth rub back and forth, cutting the grass. If you're an American watching, what was your reaction when you first saw these mowers? For me, I was like, what in the world is that? Are those tires? What's up with the big spikes? Why is it so funny looking? I at least had never seen anything like this in America or heard that anything like this existed. I had known that sickle bar mowers had been used in the past, like when they were pulled behind a horse, but I thought that they had all been abandoned, were sitting behind somebody's barn rusting. I didn't know that they were still used today. Nowadays, you most commonly see these drum and disc style mowers similar to what's on the Abbey. This is Abbey, by the way. Really, that's the company name. It's a Swiss company, and this machine is made in Switzerland. Normally, they're red, but this one's custom green. Really, deep down inside, it just 
wants to be a John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. The problem with mowers like this is that they're kind of heavy. Now, when you're working on flat ground, it doesn't really matter. But when you're working on steep terrain, gravity is always trying to pull you down. And the more weight you add, the harder it is to keep yourself from being pulled down. Weight really matters. To be able to work on terrain like this, these machines have to be as light as possible. And a sickle bar is much lighter. The massive spikes in the wheels help keep the machine from sliding. And the wide wheelbase and very low center of gravity make it very stable. So it can cut grass on very steep terrain. Before, these banks would all be cut by hand with a scythe. This would probably take all day to do the same job that we do in just an hour or so. It's still quite a bit slower than if it were flat ground, but flat ground's not an option. And the time saved makes a big difference. Because of this and other technologies, farmers can get a lot more done than they ever have been able to before. There's also another machine called the Spister. It's used to bring the hay off of these steep banks. It's gonna be in the next episode when we bring the hay into the barn. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.